All right, well, good morning, everybody from the Ohio Democratic Party. I'm Press Secretary Cameron Kerr, and I'd like to thank our statewide media partners for joining us on this very important press call this morning. Sick and disturbed, out of touch, and confused are just some of the words used to describe the man we're talking about this morning, and that's Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost. Today, ODP would like to add one more word, and that's unemployed. In the wake of the terrible tragedy involving a 10-year-old forced to leave the state for an abortion, Yost ignored his constitutional duty and did nothing more than question her story. This morning, Ohio Democratic Party Chairwoman Liz Walters is here with a clear message. It's time to resign. Chair Walters is joined by Dr. Kathleen Romanos, who has firsthand experience with reproductive health and the risks Ohio's dangerous new reproductive laws may pose to patients. We'll get right to it this morning. After the remarks, of course, there'll be time for questions. If you don't mind, just please keep yourselves muted till then. It's now my pleasure to introduce Democratic Party Chairwoman Liz Walters. Thanks, Cameron. I want to say thanks to everyone for joining us this morning. Really appreciate you making the time. Um, I'm also glad to be joined by Dr. Catherine Romanos, a family medicine doctor and an abortion provider here in Ohio. Our message today is a simple one. Dave Yost should resign. Mere hours after the Supreme Court ruled to overturn Roe v. Wade, Dave Yost rushed to court so he could implement Ohio's six-week abortion ban, one of the most extreme anti-abortion laws in the country with no exceptions for rape or incest. And immediately we see that his decision had real life consequences. Days later, the news broke of a terrible tragedy involving the rape of a 10 year old girl who was forced to leave the state to get an abortion because of Dave Yost's abortion ban. And his first move was to go on national TV and question her story and spread misinformation about the law he helped to implement, then continue to question her story through state and national media. I'd like to read one excerpt from an interview Yost did with Gannett News. And I quote, every day that goes by, the more likely that is that this is a fabrication. I know the cops and prosecutors in this state, there's not one of them that wouldn't be turning over every rock looking for this guy and they would have charged him. One day later, once the facts were allowed to play out, the story that a 10-year-old girl was raped and forced to travel out of state for a critical healthcare procedure was confirmed. And what did Dave Yost do? Did he apologize and acknowledge his role in making this terrible tragedy even worse? No. He said, apologize for what? Dave Yost is not fit for office. He is only punishing women and trampling on their freedoms, and he is directly attacking the victims he is charged with protecting. This is only the latest in a pattern of Dave Yost questioning victims of sexual assault rather than going after the perpetrators. The Sandusky Register has covered at length Yost's repeated refusals to investigate sexual assault allegations against a witness he used in a court case to try to prosecute a woman for lying about being raped, a case he lost in court. On top of that, he's misinforming Ohioans about the law he is charged with upholding. Yost repeatedly claimed that this poor girl could have gotten an abortion under his six-week ban, but the Legislative Service Commission, the state house agency charged with drafting Ohio's laws, made clear that there was no exception in the bill for rape or incest. Yost either doesn't know the law or doesn't care enough to learn and is clearly incapable of any shame. He's incapable of doing the right thing. As, as an attorney general, Yost should be looking for justice, not getting in the way of it. And an apology at this point is not enough. Dave Yost must resign. And if he does not, we are ready to defeat him at the ballot box in November. I wanna welcome an important voice to this conversation, which is a representative of the healthcare community and an abortion provider here in Ohio. And I wanna turn things over now to Dr. Romanos. Hi, thank you so much for having me here today. And I really appreciate you um, lifting up this story and even though it's important for us to hear the details of what Dave Yost did, every time I hear the details, it's a punch in the gut again. It's a horrible story. And both the medical aspects and the social aspects of this case are clearly incredibly complicated. Unfortunately, this case is not unusual. Um, as a family doctor and as an abortion provider, 
I see people every day who are the victims of horrible trauma, gun violence, assault, um, incest. And this is another example of horrible, horrible circumstances that a very young person finds themselves in. When I see patients for abortion, they often tell me that their pregnancy is the result of an assault or a rape. Very few of those patients ever report that assault or rape to law enforcement. They're scared. They're afraid they won't be believed. They're afraid that it will take too much time. They're ashamed. They think it's their fault. And even though we try and support them to report these crimes that are committed, it's very, very difficult to do. We take care of them, we support them, we do what we can. But I don't know how I can encourage people to continue reporting assaults and rapes and crimes when the people who lead our government behave like this. How could an assault survivor or a survivor of child sexual abuse or, insult, or incest go to the authorities and report something this horrible if they think the result will be something similar. I don't think that our leaders should be setting examples like this. People should feel comfortable going to law enforcement. People should feel supported when they go to law enforcement. And with, when stories like this circulate, we should do everything to make people believe that we believe them and we trust them and we care about them and we're gonna support them. So I really appreciate you highlighting this story even though it's really hard to hear. Um, and I'm really sorry that this poor child had to go through this horrible, horrible trauma. I can only imagine the trauma that will follow her and her family and her loved ones and all of the people who are taking care of her for years and years to come. I think with that, uh, thank you, Dr. Romanos, for your uh, your comments, which give us much to think about. Uh, but at this point, we're um, going to open it up for questions. I'll turn it over to Cameron to moderate. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, any questions this morning? I see Seth Richardson with a hand up. Uh, we'll go with uh, Seth first. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm uh, I'm just curious what you think um, the results of you know Yost's interviews and kind of the blowback that he's gotten will be on uh, the November elections. I think that what we're seeing and and how much um, I think response we're getting internally, right? People who are coming to step forward to volunteer, to knock on doors, to talk to their neighbors. Uh, is not insignificant, um, both since the Dobbs decision came down, but in particular in the last couple uh, last week in response to Yost's uh, abhorrent media appearances, he kind of um, you know stepped right into a, a, a pit of his own demise on this. In my opinion, um, it is callous. It shows that he is unfeeling, uh, and it shows that he's prioritizing you know national media appearances over the health and welfare of the citizens that he has taken an oath to protect and defend. Um, and people are taking notice, both here in Ohio and across the country. So this will this will uh, have a significant impact on his reelection. Seth, was there a follow-up there? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Joe Ingalls, Ohio Public Radio. Yes, I have a question here, and this is probably more for Liz. But, you know, we see these polls of how people feel on abortion and how Ohioans feel about abortion. And that um, most Ohioans fall in that group that they uh, think abortion is okay under some circumstances. They don't, it's not abortion in every case or outlaw it in every case. But the problem we see in this case with the 10 year old illuminates it is the exceptions are, they vary in the way they're interpreted by different doctors and different people. So, you know, in, in crafting your message to Ohioans on abortion, um, how does that play into your thinking? And what are you going to do to try to reach the vast majority of Ohioans 
who uh, support abortion rights but want some guardrails? I think that what we're seeing in that national polling and all the, also the polling here in Ohio is that the majority of Americans and Ohioans support Roe and want to have Roe codified, which is rights to access healthcare choices for women and decisions that are made with their provi healthcare provider and their families. It is often the most difficult decision any woman and their family have to make, uh, and the government shouldn't have uh, to insert themselves in that decision. I think the what we're seeing in states where uh, they still have protected choice rights is that there is a uh, many different uh, kind of paths states can go down to make sure that women have the choices they are entitled to, to the freedoms they're entitled to. Uh, and our focus from a, a kind of communication standpoint will be on reversing Roe in the state of Ohio, because that is what we think people agree with. We think it is what is uh, like a, an understanding that folks have about the nature of the law uh, that they wanna see in Ohio. And it's something that we have seen time and time and time again that Dave Yost, Mike DeWine, lead, Republican leaders in the state legislature have been battling against for you know decades here in Ohio. Can I follow up on that real quickly? Sure. Um, we, you, before this abortion ban went in place, before Roe fell, um, we saw in here in the state of Ohio where state lawmakers, Republicans were chipping away at row. I mean, they were chipping away, making it harder for a lot of these uh, clinics that provide abortion to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you say, okay, people want row, and that's what we're going to codify, then how do you keep it so that there's not transfer agreements that put a clinic out of uh, business, or so that there's not uh, some kind of guideline that their rule that's put in place that makes it hard for women to access or doctors to perform abortions. I think that what this uh, moment in Ohio is showing us is that there is a clear contrast between the two parties and our values and that uh, what we see here and what Ohioans are seeing is how important it is to elect pro-choice, pro-women's health candidates, not just in the attorney general's race, but in court races, in the governor's race, in the legislature, because it is not one single person um, that we need to have on the side of women in this state. We need all our elected officials to support women and their healthcare choices and their freedoms uh, that are given to them under the constitution. And so yes, Dave Yost is hugely accountable in this moment in this one piece, but it's bigger than him. It is many, many uh, elected officials that need to be held accountable. And I think Ohioans more than ever are seeing the importance of this issue for their families, for their healthcare, for their personal economics, and it's going to play a big role on the ballot in the fall across races. Thank you, Joe. Laura Bischoff, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Liz. Um, so you don't actually think he's going to resign, right? Like, would you place the odds at like one in a million, one in a billion that he, he's really going to resign? I mean, I don't, I believe he should. And if he doesn't, we will continue to try and hold him accountable with a resignation at the ballot box. But uh, I think that <laughs> what we're seeing in, uh, in the national media that uh, Dave Yost is doing is that he doesn't have a lot of shame. So I wouldn't expect him to have any right now. But does this rise to the level of like what Mark Dan was um, faced with? He was the last AG to resign. Yeah, I think these are, this is like at not apples to apples. I think that um, Yost's issue here, and one of the things that we're the most frustrated by and that voters the, find the most abhorrent is that he has kind of walked away from his oath to protect and defend and, and uphold, um, you know, being kind of that watchdog over the safety of citizens of Ohio in order to score political points. Um, and so I think, you know, whether he does or not, the really important piece here is for us to focus on that contrast and holding him accountable today, tomorrow, and all the way to November. Thanks. Just looking here, anybody, uh, any other questions at this time? Okay, hearing none. Uh, well, thank everybody for joining us this morning. 
Uh, and thank you all very much for helping the Ohio Democratic Party share this, this critical message across the state, across the nation, uh, and with all of your, all of your viewers, listeners, and, and readers. Uh, ODP will have a full release uh, out shortly. That will include a breakdown of today's coverage uh, and uh, a link to a video of today as well, if anybody should need that. Again, thank you all very much, and we hope everybody has a great rest of the week.